Okay, hopefully we've got um, good sound. Otherwise I'll edit that. The wind is blowing a little bit. So you may hear some buffering. So here's my kit guys. What a beautiful morning. So if you don't exercise, <laughs> I know it's Sunday, survival lust is gonna start preaching to us fat guys. No, I'm not. But if you're gonna go out and you're gonna do exercise, and put on 30 pounds on your back and climb up hills, it's a good idea to start out with um, just loosening up a little bit, doing some stretches. Loosen up the back and get your muscles warmed up before you start hiking up because an injury is gonna ruin your day. This is about a 20 mile loop to the top of uh, Shining Rock. Part of the Pisgah National Forest, Haywood County. It looks like they've had some pretty severe wind. All that stuff looks pretty fresh, doesn't it? Now I am carrying a weapon today. Also bear spray. I don't know if the bears are still hibernating or not, but we got into some 60 degree weather the other day. Friday, yeah, two days ago. And we have seen bears in these hills. Well, the pack feels pretty good. I don't think I would put more than 25 pounds in a backpack that doesn't have an internal or external frame. The nice thing about these soft-sided backpacks in the wintertime is you don't have to worry about sweating on your back. I do see some snow. Might be hard to tell way over there on the other side of the creek. Hopefully we'll see some snow. But it feels good though, to be out here hiking. I have not done as much hiking this year. I got lazy.
And you know, if you're gonna practice survival training, it takes discipline, you know? You gotta be disciplined. And I would say as a general rule of thumb, If you are going to bug out, if you're not going to go, if you're not going to bug out, then do what you normally do. But there's a good chance we'll have to bug out eventually, not right at first. I, I'd say I could probably hold down the fort four months, three or four months. I mean, we've got enough preps and enough supplies to last two years, but I don't think, realistically speaking, that we could stay that long. I think we would have to head out. So that's the reason why I train, guys. It's the reason why I come out here and do this. And would this be my bug out location? Well, it'd be one of them. Remember what I said, when crossing creeks with weight on you, don't act like a rabbit and try to jump the rocks. Just walk through the water. Good way to sprain an ankle. And check that out. We got some ice crystals there. That's pretty cool. That is super cool. Okay, so let's see what the forest ranger wants us to think about today. Wilderness is about self-reliance. Lack of preparation can lead to life-threatening situations. So be sure you have clothing on. Yeah, don't run around in the woods naked, guys. Only bears can do that. Water, compass, I don't really think about a flashlight. And of course, no cell phone. Notice they didn't say anything about making sure you got fire. That's kind of silly. I disagree with that. I would substitute that for fire. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Who cares about that? Well, I have a sat phone, so I'm covered. And you can get one of those bivy sticks if you don't want to buy a sat phone. I've had my sat phone for about three years. It runs you about $1,000 the first year. And then after you pay off the service contract the first year, you can drop your plan down. My plan, I have unlimited minutes plus rollover minutes. And my plan is about $80 a month. And yeah, I've been tempted to just cut it down to no plan and just have to activate it when I need it. But I'll lose all my minutes. And I've got thousands, thousands upon thousands of minutes saved. $20 a week. You know, peace of mind. That's how I look at it, peace of mind. Now, if you live in an area where you don't have to worry about cell phone interruption, then maybe a satellite phone wouldn't be a good option. Maybe just a radio or um, a personal locator. You know, Garmin makes a personal locator. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think those require a plan too. I don't know, I've never had a personal locator. I mean, the sat phone has one. It has a distress signal on it. So 20 bucks a week, if you live in an area where you have no cell coverage, and we do, 
Now we're thinking about moving to South Carolina. I say we're thinking about it, we're talking about it. All right, which way do we wanna go? Let's see. Let's go this way. This is a little bit more of a climb, but I need the exercise, guys. So yeah, we're thinking about moving to Charleston. Crazy, ain't it? Survival loss, why in the world would you move to Charleston? That is so off the recommendation scale of what you talk about. I know. Keep in mind, guys, we do have property here, okay? We're not gonna sell our property here. Now, I may huff and puff a little bit. I'm gonna take my time because I have multiple layers on and I don't feel like de-layering. Okay, so, dumb dumb me, forgot to delete the files on my SD card on my 360 camera. So I'm learning how to use this new camera and it wants to shut down on me. There's no way to delete files. So it automatically shuts down. That, that's terrible. So we're gonna have to use my phone guys. So you don't have to put up with black bars. So we won't be able to film as much as I want to, but I am gonna go over the kit that I talked about and we'll make a fire. We're gonna do lunch today. I brought lunch, I brought some coffee, some snacks, fire making. Like I said, we're gonna test out this stove. And I got this monstrous climb. So I'm sure you guys don't want to hear me huffing and puffing all the way up this hill. So I'll check back with you in a minute. I found a pretty level spot. I'll check elevation here in just a minute, but I'd say we're probably 3,000, 3,200 maybe. And there's a lot of dead standing laying around everywhere. So I brought the Silky Saw Big Boy. We'll do a back dump here in a second. Had to take that coat off, climbing up that hill. Let's see. Can you see that? 3,400 feet. That wasn't a bad guess, was it? So we got a flat spot here. I'm gonna dig a hole. Remember guys, when you make a fire, in the woods, you got to dig a hole. You got to have those embers below grade because if the wind kicks up, you need to be able to manage that fire. So if you can't make a fire block, and you don't have any rocks to make an actual fire pit. Or for those of you people that live in the city, a fireplace, then you got to dig a hole and be weary of roots, or as they say in Alabama, roots. Did they say that in Alabama? Roots, had some barbecue yesterday in Black Mountain, pretty good. I think they use liquid smoke though. What is it with all these barbecue restaurants that wanna use liquid smoke? Come on, man. So this is a beautiful location. I'm out here in God's country by myself today. We're gonna do a bag dump. I'm starting to cool off. So if I start to get too cool, I'll put my coat back on, but I'm okay. My back was starting to get a little warm. You gotta stop guys, you can't sweat. There's no sweating allowed. You get your man card revoked if you start sweating in the woods, you have to stop. And I brought some cheater with me in case of emergency. But I, I feel confident, guys. I feel confident with your support and a few attaboys that I'll be able to get a fire going without my cheater. There's plenty of material around here. 
And I'm gonna try to find some fat wood because there is some pine around here. I see a pine right there. So we'll, uh, we'll break out the uh, Falcon Even A1 and the Silky Saw Big Boy, and we'll go see if we can't find some fat wood. I'm gonna show you how to find fat wood because I don't think I've ever done that. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to find some fat wood. It's super easy. It, if you've got dead pines laying on the ground on the forest floor, you can find fat wood, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. So there'll be a lot of starting and stopping because I don't have a tripod or a camera stand for my phone. So this is gonna be pretty raw, but that's okay, right? You guys are okay with a raw video once in a while. Stupid me forgot to delete the extra files on my cam camera. But let me get this um, fire set up. Let me get everything started and then we'll go hunt for some uh, punk wood, some birch bark, some fat wood, and some tinder. Okay? So we got the fire pit dug. I've got some wood batoned up. Found some um, kindling. Got that processed. We're just going to have a small fire, guys. I just want to see if I can get a fire going. I'm not spending the night here, but I want to show you how to find um, fat wood. It's so easy to find. You wouldn't believe it. I mean, I, literally right here at my campsite. Look. So there it is right there. That's an old pine log laying on the ground and it's punky and it's frozen. But do you see all this red resin material right here? Right there, that's fat wood. And you just take your knife and just peel away at this punk wood and get into the inner core of the tree. And this is where all the resin collects. When a tree dies, all that pine resin collects at the core. You just gotta peel away. And another way to get to punk wood, or excuse me, uh, fat wood, is take your saw right here, okay? And cut that knot right there, and then that'll be all red in there. So we'll do that. Let me get the saw. I can't do this with my phone. I gotta set it down and refilm. So let me cut this off right here and see if we find any fat wood right there, okay? See how red that is? That's fat wood right there, guys. So we'll take my knife, we'll peel away this outer core, and we'll get to that nice juicy stuff. That's the resin. And that'll take a spark. So there's our tinder right there. That should get a fire going. This is all wet. But once I get the fire dried out, I'll dry some of this out and keep this because this is good. This is really good stuff. So I'm going to collect some of this and take it home with me. Awesome fat wood. But this stuff is super punky. Look how punky that is. All right, let me get, let me get this processed. And here's my little fire lay. So I dug a hole. I got a little berm, batoned up some maple, and then I got some kindling right there, just some twigs. That's all dry laurel and pine and some oak. But this will burn, this will burn real good. So I may not even need a feather stick if I can get this fat wood to go. So let's give it a try. And I got my chair. So let me do some whittling. So I was able to make some curls right there and right there. So we'll see if we can't get a spark going right there. Okay guys, I had to make an extra feather stick. so wet this is the most credulous time of making a fire is right now
too much wind. I got too much wind. But I think it'll go. Just sit here and be patient. there was no wind before I started this uh, looks like I'm gonna lose it Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. I hear it popping, so we should be okay. I'm going to process some more wood. It's coffee time. It's called a haboosh. So you just cut your three little sticks, make you a tripod. Get your nine pot coffee pot with a bale. Grind you up some fresh coffee like I did this morning. And I like carrying my coffee pot in one of these empty Folgers tubs because it kind of protects it. Because it's aluminum and I don't really like aluminum. I usually use stainless steel. So it just kind of gives it a little more protection. And I got a bunch of stuff here. We're gonna start cooking. I'm gonna break out the MSR stove. Hopefully I have enough water. I don't feel like walking all the way down the hill. So uh, we're gonna make some coffee. I'm gonna sit back and relax, guys. And just chill. Weather's starting to warm up a little bit. But it's nice. Saw a couple of hikers go by earlier. They're probably going all the way up to Shining Rock. But I'm right off trail, and there's all kinds of firewood right here. So it's like, why not take advantage of this? And I threw some of that fat wood, punky stuff in the bottom, and it's thawing out. So we'll see how long it takes. And I, the, the thing I like about this habush is you can uh, adjust your pot to whatever height you want, depending on the fire. And try to get you some green sticks when you're making the tripod, because you don't want them to catch on fire. There's my chair. I really like that chair. That's an eye climb and it's got little feet on it so you don't sink in the ground. See that? It comes with four little pads and it's sort of a ball and knuckle configuration. Super nice chair. I'm gonna sit down, maybe snack on a protein bar. Let's see. Yeah, I got a protein bar. Right here. Crispy apple pie. MedRx. Okay, guys, let's wait for that percolator to start percolating. Drink some coffee. I'm going to act like the park ranger information booth. So as hikers come by, I'll be able to give information. Yeah, it's straight up the hill, ma'am, to the right. Yep, keep going. Yeah, when you get to the top, turn around and come back. You've gone too far. So there's the stove. You only need to fill that tank up to right about there and then pump it about 20 or 30 times. Turn the valve on one third, let the little bowl fill up with fuel, close it, light it, and then she'll start and you can open up the valve. You can see my coffee pot's boiling. I had to lower it. There we go. And now I got a blue flame. I got my water here. I 
Well, that windscreen did not come with the stove. That's made by Red Camp. It has a little windscreen that you put underneath it. And I guess all that does is just protect the ground from catching on fire. But I'm gonna watch it. It'll be about three minutes. Coffee is starting to percolate. Of course, now my pot's getting all black because I got it too low. Oh well. We're gonna have some mountain house. Beef stroganoff. And I'm gonna add a little pack of ramen in it. So far, so good, guys. Okay, I got me a cup of coffee. And my mountain house with ramen is almost done. The stove works great. Tripod works great. Coffee pot works great. Making fire works great. Looks like I got a little chicory in my coffee. So overall, I think it's been a good Oh wow, there's nothing like a fresh cup of coffee in the woods. Yeah, I think it's been a good experiment today. Seeing about five people go by. Nobody's camping though, they're just day hikers. We've been up to the top one time. And let me tell you something. It's cold up there. It is so cold. We went up there in spring, about six years ago. And we made, uh, we made a lunch. Mountain Dew and I went up there on a day hike. We made a lunch up there. And we were wearing shorts. I bet it was 40 degrees with the wind blowing, wind chill of like five or six mile an hour wind. I had to get a fire going. Yeah, that was the fastest lunch we ever had. We ate our lunch and we came down that mountain. You know, you don't realize it, how quickly your temperature can change, especially when you're in an elevation, you know, where we're at, 3,000, 4,000 feet. The wind shifts. Clouds come in, sun goes behind the mountain. I mean, you, you're in a situation real quick like. So that's why I was saying when I saw that signpost back there on the park ranger encouraging everybody to take a compass and clothes and water and a flashlight and a cell phone, what about fire? You know, how many of these day hikers have fire when they go up the top of that hill? So far, nobody stopped and asked for any information. But the woods smell good with the scent of smoke going through the laurels. Very, very quiet. I haven't even heard any animals, no birds, no squirrels. Maybe it's because I'm moving around up here and making a bunch of noise. This would be a good place, though, to camp and maybe sling a hammock. Not too many flat spots up here on top of the hill. Pitch a tent. That's the problem when we came out here last time to go camping. Our spot was taken, and we had to go to Plan B, and we ended up camping on the side of the hill, and it was a nightmare. Terrible. 
it probably doesn't show up very well in camera on how steep the terrain is here, but that's probably a 60 degree, 70 degree incline right over yonder. This hill is, I know it's a thousand foot elevation from where we started at to where they're going. I know it's a thousand feet. Easy. I mean, we climbed 400 feet, 500 feet just in a half a mile. And this thing goes, I think, 15 miles all the way up. I think it's a loop. I've never made the loop. I think there's a cell tower up there, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody told me there was a cell tower up there. Or maybe I read it. So yeah, I am totally digging the MSR extreme mountaineering stove. And um, this thing burns every kind of fuel you can think of. So depending on the model that you buy, you have to justify, you know, the expense. I think that one was the most expensive. But the thing will run jet fuel, diesel, off-road diesel, white gas, unleaded gas. It runs everything. That's super cool. Yeah, and it pressurized right up. I pumped it about 20 times, 30 times maybe. Watch the gas. It's, it's hard to do this stuff when I don't have my tripod with my camera. It kind of bums me out that I didn't check that camera before I left with the SD card. And silly me has an extra SD card, but guess where it is? It's, it's in the van. I'm like, oh, I don't need to bring the whole camera case. I just need to bring the camera and the tripod. I've got everything. So, but this is working out. So I'm going to sit back here today, guys. Drink my coffee, eat my lunch. Been up here for about four hours, five hours. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Make sure this fire is out really, really good. Leave no trace. I'm going to cover all that fire pit up with the dirt. Rake everything back. I'll do a good job, guys. I'll make sure that uh, if you ever come up to this spot, you'll never know I was here. Well, guys, we had a great day in the woods. I think the kit test was a success. It was an awesome day. Really had fun. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me in this video. Hope there were some takeaways for you. If not, we'll try again next week. Till next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Be safe.